Hi everyone, this is a new session where Sam, Chu, and I continue our uh, OData Neo session. Uh, and the last time we kind of got the uh, bare minimum, the happy path, you know, to pass through through the system. And today we're going to continue to kind of handle all the exceptions and validations that we need to kind of get this off the ground. And Sam, you know, let me go back into our uh, project here real quick. All right. So let's see. So if I look into it's been a while, you know, since you and I kind of talked, so I'm trying to kind of refresh my memory here. Should throw validation exception on generate if O token is null. If O token is null. Right. So basically we have a let me run all the tests for this one. Let's see here. O tokens, orchestrations, there's foundations, and there's O expressions. Here's the wardy. What up, Paul? Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, hey. I got Sam here. What you up to? Hi, What's Paul. Up? We're just, you know, chilling. Chilling? Yep. Chilling out. Okay. Nice. So the last thing was should throw validation exception on generate if O token is null. So this is us basically going and saying, oh, the expression itself is okay but the OTOKIN is not okay. And we basically freaked out and we said the value is required. Perfect, perfect. So if I go into the, you know, validate expression, you know, we basically say convert. So this is OTOKIN and invalidate expression. We basically validate against, you know, uh, if if it's null and OTOKIN. Okay, so the rest of this is really straightforward. We basically want to go and say, you know, what kind of exceptions does this um uh we can do this as var yeah and this we could rename this string builder okay sam there's no shortcuts on names right we're gonna do this right right <laughs> <laughs> all right let me add uh sb our... do you uh, know the meaning of the sb sb string builder uh it's there's a very bad meaning for sb oh really what does it mean mm. son of a, I, son, I don't son of a gun to the cessation so we can maybe we can do you mean in english in english <laughs> what is this? so it it's... sounds like uh stupid something like this like son of a gun is that what it is stupid guy or bad guy something like this a uh, foolish Man. Okay. Okay. Well, well, that's just the more you're referring <laughs> to son of a son of a <laughs> son of a B. Yeah. Okay. Child rename raw value. Yeah, that that's more like it. Okay. Okay, friends. Um, and then we basically created this expression. And it's all good and dandy. Okay. Let's write a failing test then. Let's go here. Let's go into uh, the exceptions. And Sam, do you remember we talked a little bit about the potential exceptions that could come out of an O expression, uh, the expression generation broker? So we basically want to handle any issues that can come out of this and basically translate it into a dependency, a dependency validation exception or a dependency exception. Sam, do you remember the exceptions that this flow here could produce in any way, shape, or form? As a compiler exception. Cannot compile exception, right? Okay, cannot compile exception. That's right. So let's do that. Let's go into. But I can't remember the detail name. Uh, we we can we can trigger it. I can go in here. Watch this. Mm. That's the beauty of having unit tests. We can go and say, I don't know. Uh, we should do this as null, for instance. Right. And now if I run this, it should freak out. Oh, but we're mocking it though, so it's not gonna let me do it. Uh, I'm gonna have to call it directly. And that's okay. We can go do this. Let's go into some dummy test in here. Public void fail, please. And then this is var uh, expression broker equal new expression broker. And then expression broker dot generate expression for object what ifs okay let's run this guy oh this guy is asynchronous i didn't know that so this is a wait 
this is async task did you know sam like if you do your unit test with value tags it didn't roll out the x unit the new version of x unit then so if you do that it'll always tell you it's passing it doesn't understand value task yet mm -hmm. which is kind of disappointing to be honest with you mm -hmm. but let's do that hey sam look what microsoft gave me today what's that a weapon Hello. It's five years. Five years. Okay. Only five years. Only five. Still a baby. Baby Microsofty. You know, very old in the tech industry. Very baby at Microsoft. Yesterday, uh, our team has uh, all hands meeting, and there's a slide shares all the people in the uh -huh. Microsoft for five years, ten years, fifteen yep. years, twenty years, and yeah, uh, thirty-three, thirty-five years. <laughs> Dude, I I had I had a guy on my team. Uh, Jim mm -hmm. Reagan, he's been at Microsoft for 33 years, but he retired. 33, like I was three years old when I start when I when he when I like I when he started here at Microsoft, I was three years old, right? And I was like, Jim, this is awkward. I don't know what to tell you. Has Bill Next Gates year. still work for Microsoft, or is he entirely on his foundation now? Is he completely retired from Microsoft? Yeah, he, yeah, he's out. He's completely out. It's <laughs> over. Right? Okay, but he doesn't have any presence at all. Yep. He's, he's, wow, he's that gone. surprises me. Yeah, he's gone. And the next year, I will celebrate my 10 years. In 10 my years. Life. 10 years, Sam. Shoot. 10 years. Congratulations, my friend. You're going to get your uh, your little... Uh... And uh, sometimes... <laughs> sometime... Get a bigger rock to throw at Hassan. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, sometime this week or... I can't remember. Maybe next week uh -huh. we will celebrate uh, 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 thirty-five years for Mike Mike Pisa, our audit architect. Oh my God! No! Oh, Mike Mike has been there for thirty-five years. Oh my Lord! Wow! Uh, Paul Mike is uh, Sam's uh, manager. manager. Nice. So so that guy actually did witness Odata at its inception then. 14 yes. 15 years ago wow and, and yeah. Dot .net yeah that's and, cool. .net. and the inception of what windows 95 of many things of yeah. many many things just really going back that is <laughs> so maybe i can send forward the invited to you and come join us of course i like my and, Michael, uh, right in at microsoft is there's a tradition yeah so bring the m and the m for for example, you have five years. Bring uh, uh, five M and M's, five five pounds of M and M's. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, oh yeah, that's right. You know, people stop eating. Yep, yep. Depends on how many years you bring these years' weight of M and M's. That's pounds. Uh, Paul, I guess to you that would be like kilograms, whatever that translates. Yeah. Like seven kilograms or something. I don't know. It's two point two pounds in a kilo. So. Yeah. Oh, that'd be like two kilograms then, or something. But, well, if if it's five pounds, that's going to be approximately two kilos, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Ali, I gotta bring my M and M's. Gotta bring my M and M's, bro. That's <laughs> a <laughs> lot of M and M's. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> okay. Listen. Uh, I remember now why this wasn't working because the compilation error exception is not easy to kind of instantiate because it's an abstract class and it has an immutable array do you remember that nonsense so let's mm -hmm. see if uh, it's a, a abstract class yeah 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 it's 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 not an abstract class but it has let's let's see if i can uh, a lot of uh, um um parameter in the constructor yes so hold on exception new a compilation error exception and this guy takes something called immu i didn't even i didn't even know c sharp had a thing called immutable array under collections okay so let's do that immutable is immutable. this one of those things like like when you do interview questions they always ask you about i don't know reversing a binary tree or like mm -hmm, playing mm -hmm. with linked lists or something you know when people ask me what a linked list is i say oh yeah it's a thing that only ever gets mentioned in interviews <laughs> <laughs> all right so so <laughs> I mean, it's literally the only time you ever see a linked list like, yeah, have you yep, ever yep. seen a code base with a linked list in it ever there, there, 
there, there, there has been a trend on uh, LinkedIn where people started posting, it's been 20 years in my career and I have yet to use a reverse, <laughs> you know, order for a binary trio or something like that. It was hilarious. <laughs> Anyway, let's see what this guy is saying. It's saying value cannot be known, but parameter name diagnostics. So this guy takes something internally. So let's see what this uh, is. We come to see the error message. Okay. Error code. It's it's basically asking for. Let's take this out. Wow, it's very hard to instantiate this one thing. <laughs> very very hard. Can we? Can we... Mock it? No, we cannot. We tried, remember? So so diagnostics, yeah. You're you know, Sam, we might end up doing that. Let's see. So this here is gonna it's go and say huh? random it's talk, not, not just... uh, um, test friendly. It's not test friendly, yes. Could, not... could you not just create like a test diagnostic that inherits from it and then instantiate one of those? That's hacky and disgusting. <laughs> it, it is, but like if the thing is like um um an abstract class or something so you can't get to it then presumably that's what the framework is actually doing under the bonnet right it's to, yeah. it's it's declaring an actual thing that's derived from it not it if you know what i mean yep it's sort I, I of like how all all um uh, exceptions ultimately derive from exception um, but yeah. there are some exception types that are abstract, so you can't really like like you can't really declare. I think you mentioned last time about SQL exceptions. You can't yep. really de declare one of those yep. directly because yep. it's you have to pull uninitialized. Abstract. That's true. Yeah. Okay. okay I'll can we just you use the immut immutable every dot method? This guy, like mock this guy itself. No. Yeah. So there's a static method. Oh, okay. Immutable. It's funny. I remember Paul Wardy saying something like, "Hey, it's isn't it weird that you are that you're instantiating and modifying an immutable array?" I remember this. Um, so okay, this. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, if it's immutable, right? No, no you're right, bro. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like what oh, a weird diagnostic. experience from an API. That would be like having an add function on like an integer array, and then you're yeah. just adding an integer to the array. It's like it's an array. It's a fixed size. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. If oh, it works. We figured it out. Sam, thank you for because the. I'm here. Because nice. you're here. It's all because of yeah. you, sir. I don't know. <laughs> w without you, there's no tomorrow for any of us. Because I'm, I'm, I will celebrate ten years, but you are yep. only celebrate five years. Only five, little baby, baby Microsofty. You is know, that but... all those five years difference makes. So yeah, know that's... how to declare an immutable yep. array. Yeah, <laughs> knowing how to Do declare. Do you also understand immutable... linked lists, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> but but Sam, let me ask you this: overall tech industry, how much do you have? Okay, how how much for what? Overall, in the tech industry, how many years have you been? 10, ten years in Microsoft and three, three years in another company and one year, only 14 years. 14. 14 I, have, years. I have a total of 22. I'm an old, old soul. You know, since 1998 now, almost more than 22. More than 22. 24, yikes. Paul, what have I wasted a quarter of a century on? It's doing this shit. <laughs> the standard, apparently. <laughs> the standard. The standard. It's taken you 22 years to come up with... It took I was going to say that shit, but the standard's not that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you're, no, you're fine. You're fine. You know what? You know, I'll, I'll tell you something, though. Like, I was talking to someone the other day, and I was telling them... Um, the standard itself, it's not even the actual materialization of rules and principles. It's the idea that people need to come together and get their shit together and actually get something, you know, developed and programmed uh, where every, everyone can agree on the same, the same concepts. So anyway, yeah, you're right. <laughs> random message, get random. Strange. See, it's so crazy. Listen, guys, this is this happens in the tech industry all the time. You have a problem. If you watch the last video, we kept going in circles. 
right? Um, uh, it, it, we kept going in circles trying to initiate this thing. So it's amazing how when you step out uh, 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 of a problem and come back to it, you solve it. You know what I mean? So uh, it's funny. I think you and me started in IT about the same time, Hassan. Because I was thinking about 98, 99 is when I started. Because I remember um, just before I started my first job, my first like professional job in, in the industry, I was mm -hmm. down in the beta of .NET 1. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember back then. Right? Yeah, it wasn't even .NET 1.1. It was .NET 1. And you had to download the libraries and you had to download the uh, C++ SDK and you had to compile .NET before you could use it. This mm -hmm. was before the days that Visual Studio even existed and, and .NET wasn't even, I think it was called like the base class library or something back then. It ended up getting renamed when they announced it as .NET 1. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting Crazy times. <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> really? It is. Times have gone by so fast since then. And like, when I saw things like um, 3.5 came out and they introduced stuff like um, Link. Link, I was yeah. Like, whoa, this is going to change everything. And then, of course, when they start mounting things like OData and then the integration with Entity Framework, things like that, you just think, <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> Crazy. Sorry, I got a bit of a disaster going on in the other room. <laughs> So, uh, you know, by the way, Paul, this is probably why you and I have like, you know, a lot like we can relate to certain things and certain events. Like when I say DLL hell and stuff like that, you basically know immediately, you know, the kind of pain. But also Sam is not really that far off. You know, he knows. Sam, you know DLL hell, right? No. Oh, yes, you do. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Why are you doing that? <laughs> okay. So, so we have this instantiated, which makes me very happy. Uh, now, the other thing is, I want to see what other exceptions could possibly come out of this damn thing. So let's just figure it out. Because these are all the exceptions that we consider a dependency. See, Paul, this is the thing that I really envy about Java. In Java, you can't write a method without saying it throws X exception and Y exception and all these kind of different exceptions. Funny that, enough, I think yeah. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. And... I, it's a good thing because the, the method is saying, hey, this is what could potentially happen here. But it's a bad thing because ultimately that if that method has a dependency and it calls on mm -hmm. something and that thing throws an exception that isn't declared, mm -hmm. you've not announced that. So how, how is that adding any value? This is what I, I, I couldn't quite get my head around like, if a method declares that it throws a given exception and then you get back from it some other exception, what what are you gaining by saying hey this is this could possibly throw exception a but it then threw exception b and you well, were if, unaware of that well if i'm unaware of it it falls into that catch-all right and we we declare it like a service exception right because you still like if you look at all, most of these services right you're always kind of accounting for here's the exception that i'm not aware of, aware of right but if i have a method and i say hey all those things above the catch-all Mm -hmm. are those, those are the things that I'm going to put as my throws. I'm going to yep. say throws any one of oh, these. Oh, you don't put them. The compiler tells you, hey, your method is supposed to throw this exception and you didn't declare it. That's the that's why I'm jealous. Oh, okay. yeah. oh that's interesting. So so does the compiler look at the code stack then and yep. say, hey, potentially this yep. thing could... Oh, that's interesting. I didn't Which realize makes it, it work like that. If you think about it, it's not too much work for the compiler because if every method, so since the very first method is declaring which exceptions it's throwing, it's not a problem because the compiler now, all it has to do is just to go and say, what exceptions are defined to the prototype or the signal of that method? Well, surely if um, you had something that could analyze call chains, because you know what a method calls and you know what a method depends on and you know um, from the application level, you know mm -hmm. what you've put into things like your dependency injection container mm -hmm. and stuff. So you know mm -hmm. potentially what you could get as an output. Mm -hmm. um, it should be possible in theory to say, hey, I'm going to analyze the entire code stack here for a given method and figure out what potential exceptions could come of that. Like, yeah. it's, I'm not saying it's 
easy, but I'm saying it's probably not too hard to write some code that could crawl every possible path down a method chain, yes. like, and then say, hey, whenever there's a throw anywhere, yep. that thing could be thrown. That there, sense. <laughs> there, there, there is a reason Java is still, you know, the most popular. Like Java is very, very popular. You know, even, even of, despite the tremendous amount of attempts to kill it, right? Java still rhymes. That language is just still rhymes. It's free. It's open source. There's open JDK. Even Microsoft made. We made our own uh, uh, JDK version with Microsoft, right? uh java is going to be there forever even james gosling like the guy who created the language he's saying i don't even care about the language anymore i care about the jvm i don't care about the language and the language is still there if you want an example of resilience java is definitely a good example of resilience so anyway this thing throws argument exception it's just non-microsoft.net isn't it that's, that's java <laughs> <laughs> except Arguably, I know I'm biased, but I would say .NET is is arguably a better virtual machine. Yeah, and, it's yeah, and C Sharp is arguably a better language, in my opinion. But yep. I find Java too verbose. Like yes. C C Sharp is verbose, but yep. I think it's verbose where it matters. And there's a few odd things, like um, the keyword void. Mm -hmm. Like, does that really add anything? I don't know. But um, <laughs> wait oh, till let, let's, yeah, let's have that conversation another no, day. No, wait, no, no, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait till you see uh, Scala. Scala has nil and null and nothing, right? And it has uh, what else does it have? And it has void in Scala, and each Why? and every one of them. Why? <laughs> each each one of them means something completely different. You know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but why? <laughs> because it's functional it's programming. Like, it's more story. It's it's meant to bend your brain backwards. That's why. <laughs> I'm That's gonna get why. my daughter some juice. I'll be right back. Okay, no problem. All right. So so we have these exceptions, and we just need to handle them as dependency exceptions. Let's do that. So I'm gonna pick up this guy here. I'm gonna paste this in here. I'm gonna go and say, copy. Exceptions. And I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to write a little exception for all of us. What do you think about that, Sam? Should we do that? Let's yeah. go do this. Here's a theory. Uh, 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 member data. Name of. Uh, dependency exceptions. And then public async task should throw dependency exception on uh, generate if dependency error occurs and log it async async no worries so here's a given here's a win here's a then scala's a bit of a favorite of yours isn't it I love Scala. Scala, like there's a lot of, by the way, a lot of the work that I do in the standard is very heavily influenced by Scala. People just don't know that. Like a lot of people look at me and be like, oh, you're a .NET guy. They have no idea where I come from, you know. Nice. Um, and, and, and that makes sense. Like if you want to kind of, you know, expand your horizon, like, you know, the Elvis annotation. Do you guys know the Elvis, Elvis annotation? When you go and say yeah. var x equal blah and then only if x dot question mark question mark dot to string like that this little this little pompadour that's in here that's called the elvis you know we stole that from pearl it's called safe navigation but that's just like nerd language i would just call it the elvis annotation it's very commonly used this way you know elvis i remember there was massive disputes when it got introduced over like the value of it because it was like oh why are we just adding we stuff in we don't need that yeah yeah because it's in another language and now like you see it dotted <laughs> all over code bases <laughs> like it was always there <laughs> it's almost every year when you will hear someone saying c sharp lost its way <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then, and then here we are 10 years later and it's still here <laughs>
I, I get the impression it's power and the popular. <laughs> it's getting I, I get the impression popular. that like in programming languages, there's like a number of features, right? There's like mm -hmm. a finite number of features. And when a language has all of them, it's mm -hmm. succeeded, which is I think where we're at with like C, C++, like these really early low level languages. Mm -hmm. And now what they're trying to do is they're trying to find new ways of making the language, you know, more I guess accessible, easier to use, and things like that. Whereas C sharp's just still going. Well, what features are we still missing? Let's just keep chucking them in, and you know, see mm -hmm. what happens. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, mm -hmm. if you look at it, then from that point of view, you can go. Well, aren't all languages basically then compiling the same instructions? Pretty much the same thing. <laughs> it yeah. has to come I mean, down like, to the same thing. Mm -hmm. the, the keywords change, and the verbosity, the verbosity changes, but they're all basically the same language, right? Yep. So could you, in theory, write a universal compiler? Yeah. <laughs> like yep. if you had, if you had like a kind of dictionary lookup of like what all the keywords were and mm -hmm. how they translated to the standard feature mm -hmm. in all languages, then in mm -hmm. theory, you could write a, a lookup to that, translate it to standard, and then compile it, the standard, which is kind of what MCL is, right? It's yep. well, it's sort of lower level, but it's yep. not quite machine code yet. But then the standard is machine code. Yep. <laughs> yep. So I'm, like, it, it it would be it would be, you know what you just said this thing that you just said, yeah. I love this. But then there is also a framework that goes on top, and that framework, it's not the language anymore, Paul. It's the framework that gives you services that saves your time to get off the ground as soon as fast and possible. Like imagine this, like you, someone out there, I'm pretty sure someone out there in COBOL could just go out there and create a button in a window. But it's the difference between taking a month versus taking a minute. This is yeah. why people love OData so much. You know, I was showing OData <laughs> to someone yesterday and they were like, how do I not know about this? I was like, I don't know. You're living under a rock, maybe. I don't know what to tell you. You know, but why do you not know about OData, right? So, just somebody said to me, uh, no, 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 it came up on my Twitter feed earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody was asking if if you could build a new standard library in .NET that mm -hmm. was like like the new big thing that would like everybody would use. Uh -huh. What would you What would you make? Like the uh -huh. sky's the limit. Uh -huh. Think big. You know. Yeah. yeah. And um, my, my initial thought was, well, we already have link, but what I would like to see is a link to anything library. Ah. Uh... So I could say link to OData, or I could say link to SQL, and I could just do that as like an extension method. So I could build out a link query, and then I could just say dot to SQL, and it would just give me a SQL Daddy. statement. Mm -hmm. Or I could say to OData, and it would give me an OData query. Right. Uh, if you could build a library that just did that, yeah. I think you'd like kill so many frameworks because Link is just so amazing. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm all up for it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm all for uh, sunsetting technologies and starting new ones. That would be great. I love that. Yeah, I think Neo is the beginning of that because if yeah. you oh, if you think on. about it, if we took Neo and hello. then do you want to say hi to Hassan? Yeah. Okay. Hi, hello. Sam. Oh, okay, who is this? Hi. This is Lucy. This is Lucy. Hi, say Lucy. Hi. Say hi Lucy, to Sam. It's hi. your birthday. Hey, Happy Lucy. birthday, Lucy. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Sam. I yeah, love, a... I love the accent. Hello. How are Hello. you? Hello. Oh. Nice to meet you, Sam. British, mate. Pure British. English. This is how British. it's meant to be spoken. Oh, we want, want Britain to be that British. Hello, Lucy. <laughs> do you have a lovely day? <laughs> yes. Oh, this is this is this is do wholesome. Yes, yes, don't she? Wholesome entertainment yes. for the channel. <laughs> Hello. L L Lucy, Lucy, your yeah. daddy is my friend, and I love him so much. I want you to know that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Hassan yeah. likes me. And Sam likes me too. And Sam yes. likes you too. Yeah. Yes, I like you too. I really do. It's totally fine. <laughs> Anyways, my little terrorist. Yeah. yeah. The other, I think the other one's on her way to bed. Uh, this tired. one's not quite gotten there yet. So yeah, still kind of. You just recently started school, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. What are you learning at the moment? Are you excited Hello. about school, Lucy? Next week, yeah. I'm teaching a C sharp. 
Nice. That's it. I'm teaching her C sharp next week, guys. <laughs> She's gonna know C sharp before she knows English properly, no doubt. <laughs> if I can make this work, <laughs> it's it's basic math, simple algebra at C sharp. <laughs> There's no That's gap it. between the two. <laughs> You know, you know, there's this, by the way, Paul, you might be interested in this, same to you, Sam. There's this program called Nepris, where basically actual professionals in the tech industry can go and teach, you know, uh, disadvantaged communities. Like, you know, I always go and, you know, kind of introduce a bunch of kids in Detroit, Los Angeles, Chicago, you know, you know, different places where schools just don't have that kind of access or the capability to afford professionals in the tech industry, right? Um uh, and the one question that always comes all the time was, uh, do you need to know math, you know, in order for you to be good at programming? And I'm like, I failed math. I don't know anything about math. I don't know what to tell you. You know, sorry to disappoint, <laughs> but I'm not that good at math at all. So um, I don't know. I you know? always tell, tell people that um, algebra is basically just Boolean logic. It's it's the most basic form of it, essentially. And mm -hmm. and if you look at the relationship between logic and math, math mm -hmm. is basically just pure logic. Yep. Um, but programming languages is just applying like oh, our conception of regular spoken languages to computers in the form of Boolean logic, right? Which right. Which computers execute. Certainly, so yeah. The way that I find is probably the easiest way to understand it is to start by teaching people the fundamentals of algebra and then teach people the fundamentals of logic gates, show them the relationship between the two and then build on that because then you get a hardware foundation yeah. and a software foundation oh, before you go anywhere near any code. <laughs> uh -huh. You go away. Yes, I, I, I do have a lovely day. Well, I saw you now, so you're the highlight of my day, Lucy. I want you to know that. You know, and it's I went always. Went into the school today. You went into the school today, and what did you learn today? I learned all of my friends. <laughs> you learned about all of your friends, okay? And I, I learned that. all the teachers. Yeah. All the teachers, okay? <laughs> teachers, like... okay. <laughs> teachers. 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 How can you say a water? Hello. Can you say a what water? Hello, water. 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 Oh, hello, water. Water. <laughs> water. So, so, hello, so, water. so, Lucy, do I say water or water? How water. do you say water? Water. There you water. go. Yeah. Hello, water. Hello, water. <laughs> it's not funny. It is funny. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's not funny. Okay, got it. <laughs> oh, dear. She's, I gotta go call up today. Go on, then. Go get your sweets. Okay. I don't know how she's going to get there, but she's going. <laughs> you know, Paul, your daughter is so sweet. Thank she you. is. Yeah, she's so well behaved most of the time. Yeah, you know, most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little, uh, a little caveat there. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, okay. she's she's lovely, and I think everyone that meets her has pretty much the same reaction you did. They, just, you know, she's a delight most of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see, children new, and just give me something empty. There you go. So okay, let's do this. Uh, Okay, yeah, Sam. Sam, phew, are you ready? I'm sending you a test. Are you ready for it, son? Why do you make it failing? I'm making it <laughs> fail, but I want it to fail for the right reasons. See, now it's failing for the right reasons. Argument null exception, argument exception, and compiler compilation error. Now it's failing. All right, my friend. You see that test? Go and make it pass. Here you go. Hey Sam, do you know how to how to make no, this? No, I don't know how to open the Visual Studio. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Ah, <clears throat> oh, right in C, right in C. Interesting one that's come up recently, um, right. where we're writing. 
tests, um, particularly in our unit tests, so the standard. Uh -huh. um, Callum started writing stuff that um, specified that not only must dependencies be called X number of times, they must be called in the right order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my initial reaction to that was, are we being too strict? No, no, no. This is okay, Paul. There is a reason. There is scenarios where you want to ensure the order. This is why we use mock sequence, but I haven't had the chance to explain it to people yet. Right. Like there, like there is a situation where you have to go, hey, var mock sequence like this new mock sequence. And you basically go and say, I want these dependencies to be called in that particular sequence. And it falls off. If yeah. you don't do that, the, the reason for that is, well, think about it this way. You could literally call two, two uh, sequential operations that don't have what I call explicit dependency. Like you don't take the feedback from one and pass it to the next. For example, you're passing a student ID, right? To create, sorry, you're passing a student to create a student record, but you also want a student ID to create a library card for that student, right? Now you can easily, you know, go and say, well, you know, all I have to do is just take the input forever and pass the student ID to it. But if you do that, then you fall you fall off the wagon in terms of testing because the student hasn't been created yet. How are you going to create a library card for a student that hasn't been created yet? It has its reasons, but of course there are extremes. Like there are folks that are crazy. Like there's no reason to ensure this uh, kind of order. Uh, it doesn't matter, especially in aggregation services. We call them business logic just because, but they're not, you know, um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm on that campaign, son. <laughs> yeah, I, I think my view on it was that um, we had a set of things that had to happen. So you'd have a method and it would have to do, say, some uh, validation call, some security call, and then some dependency call to, mm -hmm. you know, the next thing in, you know, to kick off a cul-de-sac. And, and I was like, well... As long as you didn't call the cul-de-sac before ensuring that you've done your security check, it doesn't really matter kind of where you do the validation, right? Mm -hmm. Like, well, between the validation and the security call, they could be done in either order. Mm -hmm. So those things are kind of, you, you less care about them. But for something like, you know, I want to make sure I've security checked before I've done a, a child call. But then... We were talking about security checks the other day, and you were saying, well, every service should be responsible for its yes. own security checks. Yes. So in theory, if I do some validation and then call a, a child service, um, if I have any security check in there, mm -hmm. then should the standard, um, I guess what I was kind of where I was going with it was like, should it be considered a standard that the first thing we typically aim to do as soon as possible is any kind of security check, then yep. we do the rest of our logic. Yep. And given that that's a standard, do we yep. need to explicitly test for it as a requirement yes. or do we just pick that up in code review? No, we have to test for it. Right. You know, okay. you know, we only, you know, the less you rely on human eyes to catch issues in your code, the more likely your code to live longer because People change, teams change, people working on the team change. It could be an entirely new set of people working on OData Neo in the next couple of years. You know, how are these people supposed to know what we were thinking if we don't hmm. translate that into code? Tests, documentation. This is what I call unit tests. The best way to document your code is to write a unit test for it. You so you're treating the unit test as being your documentation. It's and literally my document. Yeah. And, you know, as much as possible, you, you yep. want that to be your senior. Yep. that's overseeing what the junior is writing in the actual code that you're testing. Does that make yes. sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And to be honest, I'll tell you this much. Again, I, you know, I talked about this a lot and I kept telling people this a lot. I don't think, I think the idea of senior and junior is just a way to kind of go and say, here, I'm going to pay you more and I'm going to pay you less. It's just like an excuse. But junior engineers are the people that established what you call Microsoft and what you call Google, I call Facebook today. These are junior engineers, you know, Bill Gates was 17. He wouldn't even make an entry in some of these companies today. We're like, oh, you don't have enough experience, you know, but the, the guy created Microsoft, right? Steve Jobs was 25. Larry Page was 20. These are what people call junior engineers today. These are the folks that actually make things go round, you know, and once they realize that power and realize that potential, you know, they stop kind of living in that box of like, oh, I'm a junior engineer, 
you know, I'm not supposed to know things or I'm not supposed to do things. Actually, not knowing things in the tech industry is more likely to produce an innovative individual than, you know, knowing things because you kind of get programmed by the industry itself. Like, Paul, you and I have been doing this since 1998, right? You know, it, there are things in our minds that are ingrained in our minds now where we go and say, oh, that's impossible. The computer will allow that. So now we are, instead of programming the computers, the computers programmed us. You know, <laughs> so, so no, I have a lot of respect of new people in the tech industry. They're more likely to come up with more innovative uh, solutions than seniors or, you know, anything like that. Yeah, I've often found that when I'm facing a block, and mm -hmm. this is probably not something that seniors really talk about much at all, but like if you're the the advice that everybody gives out right if you're the most um intelligent person in the room find another room right and everybody always says that you know don't don't be working around everyone who's more kind of but then how would you ever have leads right mm -hmm. at some point somebody has to be the smartest guy in every room right and so I'm often faced with that situation where because I'm um, I am the the technical lead and I'm and I work for a very small company the, the mm. company's not very big the pool mm -hmm. of expertise is not very big and right. the advice that's commonly given out is well go elsewhere because that's the only way that I could potentially grow right my knowledge set but instead of doing that what i do is i get involved with things like this and i mm. communicate with people like yourself mm -hmm. who are in much bigger teams and have a bigger expertise pool to to cater from but also a different viewpoint you know you're over in america you thousands of miles away from me so it might be that like cultural things come into the way that code is written and therefore has an impact or changes the way that people think about programming and I find that a lot of people don't really take these sort of, um, if you like, interpersonal aspects into code seriously. Like they think that it's purely a, a skill, a, a logical skill, and it's there's nothing kind of um, creative about it, if you like. But mm -hmm. as, as you like to say, you know, the standard is an art form. And the, yep. the thing is, you've got to look at it that way because when you take that approach you then encourage people that have that kind of very different mindset and it comes back to that whole point you were making earlier about math yeah you know, people struggle with math but programming's not not really math like there, there's a logical aspect to it but there's also this kind of very um it's about how you solve the problem that's more important than what the problem is if you see what i mean that you're really solving yeah um, because if you do solve it well then potentially that solution can be reapplied into other solutions yeah makes sense yep absolutely um, and this is why i try to kind of build very generic solutions and so if i if i get a business requirement right now i need a page you know a web page that does x it's like well okay how can i build any web page that would do anything you know yeah yeah content yep. management logical solution you know so take a step back um, yep. But that does introduce bigger problems. Um, and, you know, this is where we end up with frameworks like this Ode and Neo stuff, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> yep, true. So I feel like I've rambled on a bit there. No, 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 no. I'm listening. <laughs> I, I appreciate this, Paul. Sam, what happened to you? Did you get stuck? What happened? No, I mean... You're scared? The code's scary? What happened? <laughs> what, what What do we, you put to the argument now and the exception into the... You, you uh, put them in a... Yeah, go go back to the business logic real quick. So the business logic, where's the business logic here? Um, this so, is the new one. And it yep. should have passed the test case here. Yeah, good. You need to do the same for the rest. What? Why? Because so you, have, have to... you, have, you have three errors, three kinds of exceptions that come out of it. Argument null exception, argument exception, and the compilation exception, right? Yeah, but because... the the test case it only verifies the uh, no that's not true go up go up a little look there's theory right someone? and this theory has no 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 okay. look member data right okay member data is passing in it's it's three tests into one right so there you uh, go argument no exception that's right 
Let's go, Sam. I'm getting older here, son. <laughs> um. So one is Ugman and not exception. Yep. And one thing one I really struggle with is when to use theory data. Uh, when when you when so... you have when you have multiple potential inputs for the same outcome. Okay, but that's like if I have a method that expects a string. Mm -hmm. You could use theory data to say when this string null, empty, or white space, go ahead and throw an exception. Right, makes See? sense. Or you could add as many. Like if you're testing against, I don't know, something like... See, the beautiful thing about theory data is that it gives you calculated invalid string and uh, versus a a static value like null, empty, white space versus give me a variation of something that would violate you know an email uh, an email structure for instance you know something mm. to that effect it's cool yeah it's super cool but the field or exception dependency uh, dependency exceptions take the egg uh, take the exception. exception yeah that's okay because it's foreign it's a foreign exception coming from the outside world right what's wrong it's saying so real studio problem yeah it's a problem you, so, so hover over it what's it say if you hover over it what's it say sorry cannot be used like a method <laughs> yeah we got the new keyword so so sam please do me a favor put these in a variable like put that new failed expression in a variable so so they're not kind of chained out like this what's the name for that Oh, just call Failed, it the same uh, thing. Failed exception. expression, dependency exception. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of typing. Yeah. It's not my strong point. Dependency exception. <laughs> I think we need to give it a few more long words. Yeah, <laughs> my my <laughs> it it's it can pass. So Great. in my um traditional, I just like this one. <laughs> this is this is a real pain point for me because like variables should be descriptive and they should be useful right variable names i mean but at the same time long variable names really gripe me because you can't put them anywhere without like <laughs> <laughs> Just like, ah! and then of course like when you got stuff like this i'm declaring a new thing and i'm putting a very long new thing into it it's like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's uh, 100%. I try my absolute hardest on every possible occasion to declare things with like short names, but really descriptive names. That's that's a challenge. That's the hardest part, right? To kind of yeah. declare something. Okay, Sam, looks good. Break it down a little bit so it's not over 122 characters, please, sir. Yeah. And then give me a new line on 47. There you go. Is this one? That's it. Thank you so much, Sam. Beta? Yep, you made it, my friend. Oh, oh you saved me. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 this is the thing about Sam. You know, out of so many, so many, so many different senior engineers, people who are very well established in the industry, he doesn't have any problem saying, hey, Hassan, teach me this spare programming thing. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to be better. No, it's not you a know. program, but it's just a program a convention or any other thing. Yeah, pair I, programming. Yep. I've come to the conclusion that after 20 odd years, I am absolutely clueless. I it's have no idea what uh, Just kiss name and there's a Do pass, you, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And just push you know you know what paul every time someone like so far the last four iterations of the standard have been upgraded by the folks you say new to the industry they just be like hey listen you idiot you can do this better i'll be like oh teach me <laughs> yeah. show me the meaning what happened sam did you break the world <laughs> try to see what changes oh so no, it's all good one. yeah just push it good. just push it sam just click the button just push it. There you go. Thank you, sir. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. 
Hiroshima. Sam, no, are you please. even still a member of the .NET Foundation? <laughs> okay, here you go. All right, I'm taking this back to me. Um, so, Sam, I'm going to give you a, a service failing test. And that would wrap up this entire service, my friend. How about that? Let's do this. Are we yet? Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh. are you guys having fun? I hope you're having fun. Putting up a show for the world there. All right, yeah. let's let's do let's do. The uh, sometimes it's difficult to follow up your your pattern. It's, it's difficult mm -hmm. to follow the pattern. Mm -hmm. Well, that hurts my feeling a little. <laughs> I, I it, find that the standard is really easy to, to get started with, but it's very hard to master. Yeah, it's going to get all you. these. There's all these yeah. quirks, if you know what I mean. It's going to drive you into these all these little side roads where you have to kind of think about like right now, Paul, you're 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 tapping into a thing that will take other people a little bit of time to kind of reach into, right? Like when I explain cul-de-sac to people, be like, what the heck is that, right? <laughs> By the way, I'm releasing I'm releasing soon this library called Levant. It's basically a Turkish word. It means a neighborhood, and it basically handles local events. The fanning in and out kind of thing in the cloud. Oh my lord, just watch. Watch the fireworks. This is service. So I had to say fireworks in British. Like Paul, fireworks. Okay, failed uh, service. Watch me copy. You know, I was, I was looking at um, property prices, and here in the south, property yeah. is about three times more expensive than it is in the north. Yeah, of course. England is expensive anyway. Everything no, in, England in the is north, expensive. it's really cheap. And I was looking at, it, I was thinking, but it's so scenic up there in places like Scotland, where it's you know, it's not so built up. There's more highlands and stuff. But I'm not sure what like internet infrastructure is like up there. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Well, I mean, Elon Musk is now making the internet for everyone. He's giving the whole world internet, you know, basically. The yeah. entire wide world is basically saying everyone, he's like an Oprah Winfrey, like he's just going out there, be like, you get internet and you get internet. And you get internet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I, wish it wasn't so expensive. Like, is it? I don't mind paying like 500 quid for the kit. Um, now, bear in mind, a pound now because of yes whatever the hell the uk government uh, is doing these days uh -huh, right? uh -huh. a pound now is not even worth a full yeah. dollar yeah you know i remember when you could get two dollars almost to your yep. pound but we win no. we win so, <laughs> we're better <laughs> i don't mean so, to rub it in your face but we're just better, <laughs> just better. <laughs> no, 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 no. trump just didn't go far enough to screw everything up <laughs> we've had a string of pms all lining up going hold my beer <laughs> <laughs> boris, <laughs> boris. they're still coming <laughs> Oh they used God. to refer to Boris as being the UK's carrot, <laughs> with, where Trump was the, the carrot. Oh my was, God, this is hilarious! So funny, but... Oh, I love this. I love this. Um... <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, so the kit is like it's 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 about five hundred pounds. Last time I checked, which is oh my God. What, you know, four hundred and something dollars, right? Right. And. Um, but then you have to pay a hundred and I think it's like one hundred and twenty pounds last time I checked per month. You're right. For the internet access. Right. And it's like, wait, a okay, hundred per month? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the most expensive broadband you can get anywhere in the UK, basically. Yikes. Unless you're going for like some super, like you know, leased line or whatever. Right. But yeah, I, I found out I can get. A 10 gigabit asynchronous, so that's 10 gigs both ways. No. Here, if I pay four grand a month, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, but it's like the fact that I can get that is nuts. Yeah, that's true. Like, 10, 10, dude, 10 gigs. We don't even, I don't know if we can do this in Redmond. You know, I don't, th I don't know if we have this kind of capacity here in Redmond. Surely, so... like, Microsoft is basically its own internet service provider. It's right? true. That's very like true. You must be running data centers and all sorts in Redmond. Yep, potentially. There you go, Sam. There go you to go. town. Good. Ra wrap it up, son. You make this pass, we create a PR, we go home. Let's go. Six minutes on the clock. 
Come on, son. I'm getting old. <laughs> Make it break properly. I don't think it's, it's Paul's turn. Oh, yeah. It's I'm... Paul's turn. Paul, let's go. Been All I'm doing at the moment is breaking stuff, man. I, oh my I want God. to break from it. Just, just leave him. Just leave him. Just leave him. Just, just leave him. He's, he's British. You know, they, they <laughs> write code really differently over there. I did tell you earlier, I'm a bad program. I know nothing. No, you're not. You're, you're <laughs> great. No, Paul, Paul Wardy is the... So here's the thing. I know that, you know, a bunch of folks will upgrade certain bits and pieces in the standard, but I'm bidding on, on Paul. I don't bet, but I'm saying just figure of speech. I bet I'm bidding on Paul to kind of bring in the big gun, you know, maybe at some point we'll see, because once you take something enterprise and start applying it to more complex problems, you're going to get some nice, nice upgrades. That's going to light up the way for the next, the next generation of engineers. And that's what this is all about. You know, I'm trying to help engineers everywhere in the most lovable way possible. I have been trying to solve some seemingly unsolvable problems. <laughs> It, oh. It's like it's like they find you. It's like the crazy yeah. problems they find you. There's you're you're you're, you're the problem magnet, <laughs> magnet. Oh, <definitely>. yeah. <laughs> the problem magnet. <laughs> All right. Let's but do if it. it can go wrong, it will go wrong around yeah. me. Yeah, definitely. that's Mur Murphy's law. Yeah. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. That's that's definitely. the truth. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Field or exception service. Yes, that's right. Let's go, Sam. Bring it home. I need to spend some time reading up on this code base because I feel like I'm a bit out of touch with it now. You've been away for a while. I have, yeah. I've been so buried in the standard. Yep. <laughs> you're doing. You're doing like this is this is mainstream standardization. What Sam and I are doing that's mainstream. But there, but there are always these folks that are hanging out at the weird corners, trying to kind of push the envelope and expand. It's horizon a little bit, one 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 little bit at a time. Here we go. Let's go green, Sam. The, the first, go. the yeah. first big thing that I think I want to standardize is um, authorization and authentication. Yes. By the way, Christo is also doing something around that. You two should talk to each other. I should bring the both of you yeah. for the third uh, the third session in the security uh, uh, series and talk about that. Woo! There you go, Sam. You made it. All right. All right, son, create a pull request. Pull request? Have, create, create a pull wow. request. I have only 20 million, 20 million other meetings. Let's go. I'm already late. Quick. Let's go. <laughs> that was quick. Did you see what I did there? <laughs> no, yeah. you are important for this session, not important for that session. Okay. <laughs> True. <laughs> are, are you going to create the pull request or no? No, share, share. just a push. Oh my God. Okay, fine. I'll create the pull request. Oh my God. Oh, you I'll want to create the pull request for the whole branch? Yeah, yeah. I'll create it. Fine. You can create it. How are you guys yeah. doing it these days? Are you forking and then? Yeah. No, than... no, no, no. We don't have to fork. We're gangsters. We don't fork. <laughs> we have we the don't... full access right. Yeah, full access right. We can read the right. We are yeah. the mean. Yep, that's it. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know if you were creating a branch in the Odata Neo repo or creating yeah. a fork of it and then working on the the main branch in just that fork a, and then pulling the it back in, if that makes sense. Yep. Look at the beauty of this. Test, Ooh. pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, my dear friend, that wraps up our session today. I hope you had fun. It was a little little show there for the world. And uh, Sam, the next step for us is to basically go and say, we have this O expression service, right? That does the stuff that we need. We need to also have another service that converts backwards. Like we want to give it an expression and it gives us back an O data uh, raw query. And that one, Paul, Sam, that one is the hard one. That one is where all the magic is, right? But uh, technically, we almost have like a working solution. We can take an OData query, a select query, right, for first release, and we can turn it into an expression. This is beautiful. This is beyond beautiful. Okay, so friends. Unpacking expression trees here, right? Yes. Oh, that's going to be brutal. We're going to find a way, though, because... Just yeah. like we did with, the, remember how we said, oh, it's so hard 
um, let's see. Remember how we said, oh, it's very hard. How are we gonna can take these O tokens and turn them into expressions? And then it hit me. I said, hey, why don't we just go ahead, you know, and turn just use that C sharp uh, script to take that raw link query that we construct as a string and give me back an expression. That saves a lot of work, a lot of work, right? Now we just need to do it on the way back. And by the way, doing it on the way back, that's what OData today does not offer. Like you can't actually give OData library today an expression and say, give me a raw string OData query. Doesn't do that, right, Sam? Go ahead. Um. Yes, there's a Hexon project has a similar functionality. So, uh, so also um, ping me that we maybe uh, can learn each other. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bring them over. Next time, can we pull him together and learn his, and we can learn from him, and sure, maybe you can share our 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 our, our results. So. Our so so, so Sam, what's your availability on Friday? Hmm. <laughs> Friday. Friday. Uh, uh, again, I'm not available on next Monday and the next Wednesday. It's a donated conference, but okay. maybe it's okay. We can do a session this Friday, but I'm not available until nine p.m. Nine a.m. Okay. okay, when when on Friday? Ten. 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 Ten is okay. Ten. Is okay. Ten, ten. Uh, ten to eleven is okay, and the eleven, eleven four fifteen. I have a demo. Yes, ten to eleven maybe. Ten to eleven on Friday is okay. Yeah. Okay, let's do that then. All right, my friend. Okay, Paul, if you can make it, please come hang out with us. We we'll always appreciate your thoughts and ideas. Yeah, and make sure you have the Visual Studio installed. <laughs> <laughs> dig. Time, it's your turn. A little dig right in the heart, dude. That hurts. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got Visual Studio set up. I just need to have a look through the, the repo and figure out where we're at. I, I, to be honest, I'm completely lost with it all. And That's okay. I've been Come so back. buried yeah. in my own Give stuff lately. Reveal the pull request created from Hassan. Yeah. Give a approval. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 totally. By the way, Paul, if you've been doing the same thing in your current project, you won't. It won't take you long to to figure out what's going on. All right, <laughs> and then I'll give you I'll give you like a breakdown this week or next week. If Sam is not around, just come in and let's keep the sessions going. If that's okay with you, Sam. No disrespect. All right. Okay, people, I love you all. I appreciate you. Uh, for people watching, of course, you know, if you like this session, don't forget to like and subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye bye.